Hello, hello. This is December 22nd, 2022. Christmas is coming and we're painting clouds. Again, this is round three of painting clouds, really kind of learning clouds. This is all based on the fact that um, I was doing a painting and um, I was trying to do clouds and I was completely failing at it. So I started trying to learn clouds as best as I could or as best as I can right now. Really gaining a lot of knowledge, trying to share all that knowledge with who, whomever um, jumps into the stream. And just having a lot of fun. I do daily art every single day. And I'm trying to share that with as many people as I can. Pretty cool. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, I picked this image today. It's a much, much more complex image to work from. And the first thing I'm going to do is resize my canvas. Uh, probably, maybe what I want to do on this is focus. Yeah, there, there's so much going on in, in this uh, photograph that maybe I don't want to um, do everything. So let's crop it down. And that's, that's interesting. The one thing I don't use... I don't use cropping very often, but I know I want a two to one ratio. So two width to one height, which is a 2.0 ratio. So I just lock the ratio there. And now I have this really nice um, cropping dialogue. And I could just crop this down just to focus on the clouds and the mountain. So let's do this. Let's crop it. And what I think I'm going to do is... Let's see. Good morning, Thinker. How much time do you spend searching for reference photos? Uh, this morning when I was searching for a different photo, I probably spent like 10, 15 minutes. I usually go to Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S dot com or Unsplash. Sometimes I hit Shutterstock, you know, and all the stock photo sites out there if I'm looking for something that the free ones just don't have. Um, just because the watermark is really annoying to kind of get around. So this photograph is from Pexels and the artist or the photographer is Le Argonauts. Argonauts, A-R-G-O-N-A-U-T-E-S, the Argonauts. Not sure what Argonauts mean, but anyway. So the I want to resize the canvas, and but I'm trying to decide how I'm going to work. I think I'm going to work below this. So I'm going to change the orientation, make sure that the canvas size is not the ratio is not linked, and I'm going to double the height. So here's some math for you. What's two times one seven seven six? 3,552. <laughs> 3, there we go. Then the next thing I'm going to do is create a layer and fill it with a 50% gray. It's what I just like to work in, is a, or work on top of, is a 50% gray. Although last time I filled the canvas with a generalized color. So let's do that again. I'll tell you what. Let's, let's even do better. Let's select like the dark sky color. Oof, I better put this on a top layer. There we go. And then to maybe make my life a little bit easier, something I haven't played with on Krita at all is gradient. So I wanna do um, a gradient for this sky. So let's, Adjust the gradient, edit. I wonder if I can just do a picker here. Let's see. So this is a new, looks very similar to Photoshop, but usually, there you go. I have to double click it and then come out here and pick 
Maybe that blue. I don't know why it filled the whole thing. Oop, I was on the wrong layer. Why are you gonna do it like that? Okay, the gradient tool is a bit odd. So, I wanna edit, let's edit this one. Because it has two. Double click, do this picker thing. I'm on the right um, layer now. Okay, from there to this. Okay, okay. But of course, I don't want it filling the whole thing. There we go. Hello from Taiwan, Shen Sun Xu. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, but I'm trying. <laughs> and welcome, welcome for jumping in. Okay, um, yeah, so I got my background in, or at least the sky kind of color. It's kind of a interesting color. I'm actually gonna work above the sky on this. And where do we go to next? The, kind of like we did last time, I'm just gonna do this huge block in. Try and get the drawing okay, but not worry about it too much. But what brush to pick? Let's go for the same brush that I was using before on the clouds last time. And let's just pick a general mountain color. And it looks like it's right in the center of the whole thing. Here, there, there. Goes down here, and another peak, and right around there. And this guy, just kind of drawing this out real quick. Do we need to care um, how accurate this is? No, not right now. I'm gonna grab that dark blue. Really big brush. Just fill it all in. Get something going on down there. Take another selection of some of that mountain color. Maybe this area as well. Smaller brush, smaller brush. some of this color. These are, you know, the drawing's way off, the color's way off, but it doesn't really matter right now. We'll get into fixing all that stuff in a bit. Right now, kind of like if I, if I, this is probably the size I should be working on this, like really tiny. So, you know, just kind of thumbnailing it out, right? Getting an idea of where all the major colors and values and drawing is. I can see it much better this way. I know it's really small for you guys, but you know, that's kind of like the thumbnailing process, working this small. It's all about composition, all about the basics. I don't know a lot about how to paint clouds, but we're learning and I do know a lot about composing an image, or at least the process you use for composing an image. I took a wonderful course um, once, and it was in the School for Visual Storytelling, uh, svslearn.com, if you're interested in that. And if you want to know composition really, really well, um, an illustrator by the name of Will Terry teaches all about composition there in a creative composition course. And there's several other uh, courses associated with it. But um, man, I learned so much about composition within that course that it was just ridiculous how, how um, helpful it was. 
ridiculously good. I think through that one course, I learned more in composition than I have, you know, my entire life as an artist. <laughs> it was that good. So svslearn.com. And the great thing about it is they have like a 14 day uh, free pass. And um, I mean, in, in 14 days, you can go through almost any course on there and do all the lessons to get a full course and get, you know, kind of an idea of you know, how they do things. A fantastic deal, right? So, and every time I take a course, <laughs> I just go ahead and pay for at least one month because I think uh, one month on that is like 24 bucks. And every course I've taken is worth, it was darn worth, you know, $24. So I don't really, and that was a while ago. I haven't taken anything in a while there, but um, they're constantly adding stuff. So check it out, svslearn.com. Wow, look at these wispy clouds up here. This is going to be interesting to figure out. I'm just really uh, just hitting this quickly, blocking in stuff and having some fun with it. I see that even though I did a gradient in the background that um, it doesn't quite match. I should have looked at uh, where I was placing that gradient a bit better to get you know it, it a little bit more accurate. And Thinker, I'm doing that thing again where I'm, I'm super zoomed out and trying to select some colors. I don't worry, I'm not worried about too much accu accuracy right now, but yeah, these are not very accurate color selections because I'm so far zoomed out. So I've got to zoom in on Krita and maybe even Photoshop. I have to see, you know, what it's like in Photoshop. Uh, to make selections on an image this small, see if um, it's even any better. Not sure, not sure. Could be. Each uh, application has its its strengths and weaknesses. I think um, Krita is is much stronger than Photoshop when painting. You know, getting that kind of traditional painting feel. But a lot of other people would probably disagree with me, and that's fine. Just obliterating my gradient back there, just killing it. Alright, now I zoom out on that. I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's pretty close. As far as the generalization of this whole composition. Boy, that took me like two minutes to pop in. So now it's all about just refinement, right? Yeah, and you know, I, I did put it on a separate layer and man, I, I wish you would have said that before. Like I put it on a separate layer and then manipulate it. <laughs> I kind of manipulated it instead of just painting over it, but now I think it... Let's see, let's see. Um, probably the first piece of manipulation I want to do on that gradient layer... Well, that's interesting. Hold on a second. I think I did something wrong. No, it's there. If I try and transform it... Oh, it, it looked like it went away. No, that's not going to work. Okay, I see. I need to bring the bottom up to lighten up that background and bring the top down to kind of squish it, squish the transition in. Yeah, that would have been a lot easier if I'd done that before. Let's see what it looks like now. But yeah, I think a bit closer on that, but you know, I can manipulate what's behind it um, a bit easier. So if I go back to my brush, turn it into a eraser I can erase a lot of this and then keep some of it so thanks for the tip there thinker 
You're thinking, I'm painting, we'd make a great team. <laughs> going to be a shorter stream today. Man, I had so much trouble sleeping last night. Or this morning. Man, woke up and I think I only had like two or three hours of sleep last night. My brain was just going crazy. All kinds of stuff. All right, so let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more so you guys can see what I'm doing. What I'm going to do is jump right into my center of interest, which is going to be uh, the mountain here, and then start kind of working from there. I switched to my oil painting textural brush, which, you know, I, the more I, I play with this, the more I'm not certain how well it works. Let's go to this next one. Especially in a, in a smaller format. kind of like, you know, you create these oil painting textural brushes and you have to use them big because that texture just gets lost, uh, you know, on really small, when you're working really small, or maybe you'd have to make up a second brush to, to work smaller and keep as much texture as possible. get too caught up in too much detail right away. I made that mistake too many times before. What I'm going to do is just grab some value changes here. Um, and I'm actually going to move back to my artistic color wheel. Grab some value changes here and get some general changes within this mountain. Right now, get some of this drawing down better. nice thing about working this way is you can just drop a vertical straight down from where your drawing is kind of visualize a vertical right and you know make your placements as close to that as possible I just did that and realized oh wow I'm, I'm way off on some of this drawing What I usually go for a lot of times, because I'm, I'm actually thinking about this painting as, you know, what an oil painting. But I'll go for the silhouette first. You know, when you're drawing anything or painting anything, and you don't know where to start, look for what you understand and what you think is like the easiest to do at the beginning. Um, and start there. Start with the easy thing first. And then build off of it. So the easiest thing for me at the beginning is usually the silhouette of whatever shape I'm working on.
What's interesting is as I work through this every day, you know, working digital, working digitally, um, I'm starting to learn that, um, well, when I see, when I've watched digital artists work before, you know, it seems like they move so fast through everything. You know, zoom in and out happens really quickly and they got so many things going on at once, it seems like. And it's kind of overwhelming, but you know, the more I work on it, the more I'm like, oh, okay, I'm, I feel like I'm kind of speeding up now, I'm getting, getting up to that speed. And maybe that, you know, that's probably what it is, is you just always work up to it. Let me try this different one. Changing brushes, looking for what works for me, for whatever section I'm working on. I'm really doing a ton of selections, when honestly I could probably uh, start pulling a lot from the colors I already have and, and uh, you know, helping out my workflow a bit more. some of those shadows in from the clouds so they're casting some of their shadows which is wonderful you know clouds have form it's a difficult form to grab that's why I've been messing with clouds for the past few days I'm trying to understand where that form is <clears throat> it's a very soft form I mean I guess, you know, one of the easiest things you can do is maybe draw like a building or something um, because it's, you know, very geometric. You, well, especially with Krita, you just use the uh, assistant tool to set up your two point perspective and you just match up all the lines and there you go. You've got a building that looks, you know, perfect in perspective. It's such a wonderful tool to help you and any you know traditional media or whatever like oh I need to work out perspective for this painting um, I want to do okay well let's work it up in digital first and then transfer all that knowledge over to the exact painting I want to do a video on my YouTube channel well of course my YouTube channel but I want to do a video all about, um, you know, um, a case for traditional artists jumping into digital mediums and using it. There's so many people that still refuse to, um, you know, just start working in digital media like it's cheating or something. <laughs> there is no cheating anymore. It's going pretty fast. I'm doing a lot of textural things within this mountain here, but keeping it, keeping it pretty simple, honestly. The mistake I made on the previous um, landscape was you know, getting too detailed too quickly. Which is funny, is I, I work my oil paintings up exactly opposite of this. But trying to do the same that I do on my oil, oil paintings is, you know, it just wasn't working. Hmm, I got that one in the wrong place. So easy to move. I'm not even going to move it, I'm just going to paint. Drop a vertical straight down. 
You see, I'm trying to do a, a cloud texture with a very, well, a, the softness of the cloud with uh, a very textural brush is not going to work well. I mean, this is um, a nice way to work, you know, the, the general to the specific, but it's not the only way. Um, and I bet you if, if I had a lot more digital experience, you know, get a few more years under my belt with uh, working this up, you know, working digitally, that I could start detailed and continue on from there, no problem. You know, it's, it's that experience that is really necessary. Just not worrying, you know, right now, not worrying about any kind of texture. Well, not a lot of texture, but any kind of um, deep detail in this. What I will do is make sure that values are pretty cor are correct. So drawing and value is the only thing I'm worrying about. Um, I'm, I'm working on and recording a tutorial right now for an oil painting that I'm just having so much fun with. I'm gonna put some hints on it on my website with my daily art logging soon. Um, but one of the things that I'm talking about on that a lot is this aspect of um, separating the complexities that you have to deal with when you're taking on a new painting. I've made this mistake a million times, you know, hopefully not that much, but a lot of times where you begin a painting and then uh, you start everything all at once. So you start painting in oil, so you worry about drawing, and then while you're painting, you're trying to get the color right as well, and the value. And then, you know, you're like, well, I'll just go for it, you know, maybe the composition will work out, maybe it won't. And so here's what you, you run into, is every single stroke that you put down has to have perfect drawing, value, um, edges, color, and composition on every single stroke. Like, that's, that's too crazy. So, what I've done, what I'm doing with this tutorial is breaking everything down into steps super clear steps that you can understand and get to a successful painting um, by just saying okay this time at this point we're gonna we're gonna focus on the drawing first and before any of that it's all about you know composition so the very first thing you do is you have an idea you think oh, okay well how this really I this great idea for a painting and you think okay what, what kind of narrative does it have what kind of story can I fit into this painting um, or what is this probably the you know the best thing is to start with a story a narrative at the beginning and then think of the visuals to go with it you know how can I um, how can I describe this in oil paint right that would be where you start and then you work up your composition you know I, I did a composition digitally um, just got all that figured out rule of thirds golden ratio everything and then after that you oh and by the way while you're working all that up you think about all right, what's the best size canvas for this? What's the best size to work for this? 
because what I'm working on was is uh, two portraits in one painting, so two figures that you can see uh, their faces as well. And um, if you're going to do that, you don't want to work on a really really tiny canvas, you know, an eight by ten or something, because you'll be working so darn small that um, you know you'd be a, down to a one hair brush trying to trying to work with those um, portraits so I'm like okay this needs to be a 20 by 30 canvas so that the the size of the head and eyes you know maybe and usually what I, I um, judge it on is you know from the forehead to the chin as long as it's more than like six inches tall you know whatever that you know and you can do that digitally you can kind of figure it out digitally as long as it's more than that then I I'm, I don't have an eye that is um, you know half an inch across you get an eye that's probably about an inch an inch and a half across depending on obviously how zoomed in your uh, figures are so you figure all that out at the beginning. You know where everything's placed. You know what your composition's gonna look like. You know that you are working on the right size canvas. And then you start adding on complexity from there. <clears throat> so you transfer it to the canvas and maybe, and I grid, I do a grid because I've already created the piece myself. You know, I don't feel like a problem gridding it off. So I grid it off. I use a fairly large grid so that it has a lot of influence of me in there as well. Um, then you work on the drawing, and when I work on a drawing, the first thing I go for is the silhouette. The silhouette of one figure, then the silhouette of the other figure. I'm trying to get that as accurate as I can. Then the next step after that is, you know, after you get the silhouettes, uh, maybe you get, a, well, I had multiple figures, so I got the silhouette of both figures together, I remember. And then after that, you get the silhouette of both, of each individual figure. Make sure you have that down. And then, so you have these silhouettes, kind of the outline of each figure, and then you start working into the figure, the portrait, getting um, the drawing on that. Well done. As close as you can on each figure, then you work to the hands, to the body, uh, and you get your drawing laid out. And while you're drawing, it, it's not... Uh, a linear thing well I mean it is because you're drawing but you're also thinking about um, how to describe the form so a lot of the time when I'm working um, you know on the drawing I will do a lot of cross contours so kind of you know like not cross hatching but um, I will go across the form or with the form with some lines to help me understand how that form exists in space. And that gives me a huge understanding of, you know, how the form of the head or the hand or the arm fits in space. Because at that point, once you have the drawing down and you know the form well in your head, how it uh, recedes into space or comes towards you. Uh, the lighting of that form is going to be a lot easier, which is the next step is um, <clears throat> getting an understanding of value. And sometimes I'll work that up within the drawing, you know, maybe make some darker and lighter spaces just within the drawing saying, okay, this is shadow, this is a light area, this is a dark area, etc. So one thing at a time. Not everything all at once. Not like everything, everywhere, all at once, yeah. And so when, on this tutorial, which, you know, I hope to have out early January, it's taken a long time to record. 
Um, and, and I think I need to buy some more hard drives. I'm filling up all my hard drives. Um, and I'm not even recording in 4K. It's ridiculous how, how much I'm recording this. But um, after I have all that figured out, when I start started painting on it, which I've already started painting, it's like, you know, I have the drawing figured out. Well, I have the composition. I have the narrative figured out. I have the drawing figured out. I got the form in my head. I know, you know, how the, it's going to flow through space. And the rest of it's just like, make sure I get my... Well, the next step, really, is make sure I get my values correct as I'm painting. That's A number one. I have to have those values correct. And then I'm trying to get, you know, somewhat close to color. I'm not trying to get perfect on the color at that point. And I just move through the figures just doing that. Like, value and uh, getting those hues similar. Of course, you're always thinking about drawing in, in all of this because, you know, the drawing is... You're making some corrections, but at this point it's super easy because you have everything down that needs, that's going to inform, you know, everything you need for the, for the painting. And I'm at that stage on the painting right now where I'm just working through the entire painting and focusing on getting the value down in paint and getting the hues pretty close. You know, is it warm or is it cool? Is it yellow, blue, or green? Is it a warm uh, yellow? Is it a cool yellow? These kind of things. I don't know what step number that was, but <laughs> that's the next step. Then after I do that, which I'm, I'm not finished with that yet. After I do that, I'm going to just refine. Because after that, you know, it's kind of like this painting I'm working on here. Um... It's really kind of the same thing. I, I got my drawing in. I, I did do the drawing uh, and value and color stage all at the same time. But, um, I mean, this is a smaller painting. It's a landscape. It's a bit easier. Once you get into figures, it's, you know, a whole other ball game. A lot harder. Got to get that drawing much closer. So that's a separate step. But breaking those into, up into steps was the whole point of that crazy talk. Sorry about that. Kind of go off on this. You can tell I like it a lot because I can sit here and talk about it for forever. Okay. This is coming together a lot faster than I would expect it. You know, I think most of it is because I just, you know, I have the a little bit more experience now of how to begin these paintings and how to break things up into, you know, larger forms first. Just work on that. I have an idea of what brushes I want to use when. I'm only using two brushes right now an oil painting textural brush for whenever I touch uh, the mountain or the, the ground. And then this softer kind of hairy brush that I created uh, for the clouds. And I'm staying away from the details, just getting big areas in. Big broad areas, trying to get some Trying to make sure that the drawing is working well, or is in this the, the correct place, number one. And then also trying to get the values a little bit right on these, which kept selecting a much lighter color than it should be selecting. It's still doing it. That's fine. And using a big brush. Uh, see, the one thing that I'm, I'm doing here on these clouds that is, is becoming kind of natural is, and I did put in some lighter colors, but I'm working mostly dark to light. Get, you know, getting the, the dark 
um, areas, at least under the clouds, done first, and then and then adding the uh, the lights on top of that. So switching to my textural brush for this darker area. Wonderful cloud shadow there. I mean, this is going to really pop out the form of that cloud. I know it. I made sure that my shadow was, was there on the cloud, then brought into the half tone, and then getting into the light, lighter area on the cloud now. Working it up that way, man, that works so well. You know, making sure I get some similar shapes going. And I'm going up. Getting up into the sky now. I think I've defined the the land well enough. Except for some pieces of the mountain. You know what I really need is an arm uh, for my pen display you know a desk arm because it's sitting right on the desk which is fine I mean it has some wonderful tilt features to it and everything but um, my arm keeps hitting the desk so that's kind of annoying but the positive from that is that uh, my arm is well rested you know, I'm not really working my shoulder too much. Boy, I'm doing that oil painting. And I'm getting a shoulder workout because I got my arm up like 90% of the time. Just suspending my arm in space to paint on a canvas. It's, uh, you'll get a muscle burn. It's a good workout. <laughs> All right, so working on these little smaller clouds. What's wonderful about these is, you know, there's some shadows cast on them. Even the most wispy of the clouds are casting little shadows on this mountain, which just um, gives them a life, a, a shape all their own. It's really nice. Make sure I get those shadow shapes in there and looking okay. Yeah, the drawing's not exact, but that's... I don't really care about that right now. Zoom in a bit more for you. Ooh, not that much, because I can't see. Okay, let's work up into these clouds here. You know, I always say this. I say this is going to be a short stream, and it's already been 45 minutes. I was planning on, you know, just 30, but hell, I might as well go the full hour. Boy, when you get into it, it's like hard to stop sometimes. I do this thing, uh, I do a daily minimum every day. So my minimum art time every single day is at least 30 minutes. And I've been doing that for uh, 10 years now, straight. So you look at my website, and you can look back 10 years, because I log all of it, of everything I've done every single day for the past 10 years. I think there's like two days close to the very beginning where I didn't take pictures of what I've done. But I, I wanted to be super transparent about it for reasons I won't go into right now. Um, but most of those days are... Um, you know, I would start out with 30 minutes because maybe I'm sick, maybe I don't feel like it, you know, I'm just 
maybe I'm super busy at work or, you know, a million other life things that kind of come up that derail us from our art practice, right? Um, I think we all know this. Uh, so setting that minimum, what has happened is, you know, okay, well, I can do 30 minutes. I just plan it in the day, knock out my 30 minutes. But then a lot of times it's like, uh, holy crap, it's been, you know, 45 or an hour. And you just get so sucked into it that the time flies. And it feels really good. And then keeping that practice up has really uh, helped me continue to grow as an artist. And you can look at my first painting uh, 10 years ago. It was quite terrible. 30 minutes a day. It's all you need. It sounds like I'm selling one of those, you know, ab-related things where they're like, 30 minutes a day, get rock-solid abs, blah, 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 you know. <laughs> I, I think that would be accurate if they didn't follow up with in two weeks or in two months, you know, no, 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 no. sorry. You're not going to change your physique in two weeks or two months of just doing 30 minutes a day ab workout. Sorry. And besides, abs are made in the kitchen, not in the gym. Oh. Gotta get rid of that fat. I'm talking about fitness stuff right now. Not art stuff. Okay, let's get back on track here, Chris. Okay, we're at 45 minutes or 47 minutes into the stream. Within 47 minutes, I've been able to um, really define the entirety of this painting. I'm really super happy with that. Okay, let's save as, let's, I'm going to save it as a Krita document. Krita. Um, and I'm going to keep the same name. That way I know that uh, I pulled from Les, Les Argonauts on Pexels for this image. Yeah, this is looking really good. Um, as far as, you know, digital is concerned, I think I'll continue to work up my paintings this way. And... Uh, you know, then get into the details later. I mean, because look, I can I can zoom way in on this painting. And there's so much there I can work with still. It's really nice. Uh, and this, with the size of this painting, I, man, I didn't even look at the size of it. It may be massive, but um, it's a square. 3552, 72 DPI. So not a huge image. Uh, my computer is able to use it just fine, you know, no problem. But there you go. I think this is good for the stream today. Uh, tomorrow I'll continue on this and I'll probably start again um, in the center of interest, which is right in the center of this composition. It's a pretty simple composition, really. There's not much to it. And see if I can refine it a bit. Um, yeah, that's probably what I'll start with. Because I want this to be another finished painting. I want to take it to finish like I did uh, the previous painting. But there we go. It's 4 a.m. here. Hopefully it's a great time for you guys. Uh, thanks for joining me again, Thinker. Thanks for anybody else that showed up. And uh, you guys have a wonderful day.